Okay, so I went to the EB Games Expo last week and I did some previews, uh, did some reviews as well. Um, I spoke to some Aussie developers, spoke to some of the bigger developers as well. Uh, there's a few interesting things to come out of it. We also had the uh, cosplay convention, which um, you'll see in a separate video, and it was a bit odd for me, something which, which I've never experienced before. So I hope you enjoy. Up to 7,000 people attended the first session on the Friday morning. I don't know whether they were unemployed or they took a day off work. There were young people, there were old people, uh, a lot of people you consider nerds. And one thing I did notice was I heard the song Gangnam Style about 20,000 times and I saw many people dance to it as you can see here. Um, as you can tell it probably got pretty old pretty fast. <laughs> I also spoke to some Aussie developers. Um, okay. uh, so here I am with uh, Gonzalo Arroyo from Red Knight Games. He's the tech artist and company director. And um, he's uh, about to release the game Grapple Knights. So if you tell us a bit about Grapple Knight for us. Alright, so uh, Grapple Knight is it's an action 2D platformer. Uh, it's very reminiscent to a lot of the games that came out during the 90s. Like Mega Drive and Super Nintendo. Sort of like a so the idea is that you play as the character called the Grappling Knight and you sort of behind the game is that there's a little alphabet that is fusing these animals together and sending them out against like this and with the axe you can attack them and actually separate two animals back into the original form kind of like the way that Sonic used to do with the animals and break down the original fly away. I'm here with Ryan Alcock from uh, Blunt Instrument Studios. He's a developer for Missile Control, which is uh, to be released on the iPad. Uh, Ryan, can you tell us about Missile Control for us? Missile uh, Control is basically an RTS with uh, a twisted control scheme, where it's kind of like a flight control style game, but it's reversed, where you, instead of guiding in planes to land, you're guiding your missiles out to take, in, take out the uh, you know, enemy missiles. So I'm speaking to uh, Trent Custis from Device Yay. Entertainment. Um, they're producing a game called Vigilante Speak of the Dead. Uh, it's currently closed beta, but they hope to release it uh, early to mid-November. Uh, can you tell us about the game? Yeah, certainly. So, Vigilante Speak of the Dead is a social mobile robot game. It's also massively multiplayer. So you can play it on the so I can't see it. It's on the tablet and on Facebook. It's a persistent uh, persist profile. So you can be playing on your iPhone, walk inside, throw it down, and then pick up where you left off on Facebook. The rest of the interviews we did sound like we're in a wind tunnel, so it's very unfortunate that I didn't get to showcase exactly what these games are like and how they're creating them. But basically, the barriers to entry to game creation are lowering all the time, and Australian developers are finding it easier to break into the market through digital distribution and universal platforms. And to top off my time at the EB Games Expo, there was the cosplay competition. Cosplay, a Japanese portmanteau of the words costume and play, was coined by a Japanese writer observing an LA sci-fi convention, noting the elaborate costumes the fans wore. Australia has a thriving cosplay subculture, so I went along and asked the question, why cosplay? Uh, I'm here with uh, most of the team from Team Fortress 2. I just wanted to ask, um, uh, it's very, they're very elaborate costumes. Uh, why do it? It's fun. It's fun. How like do do you do how much uh, how much time and uh, money do you put into this? Oh, too, much. <laughs> too much money. Too much money. So we've got a a journal and two members of the public um, dressed uh, Superman. Uh, Alice from Resident Evil Extinction. Okay, okay, so I've never played that. <laughs> it's Carlos, it's actually the movie version. Of course, of course. <laughs> okay, um, and can I just ask, uh, why do it? It's just the best fun ever. Okay. <laughs> you can't not just have not go to these things. 
Why cosplay? What about it makes you do it? Well, I'll be honest, this is my first big gaming convention. So I drove 12 hours from the Gold Coast to come all the way down here. And this is just my first experience as a cosplayer in a cosplay environment. And I think the thing is, we are all nerdy on some level. And this is what's on all be nerdy and all be fair. Why not cosplay? Look at the boys, that's the best. Why not cosplay? What do you get out of it? How much this all cost you? Uh, it doesn't cost me anything. As long as I got people to take photos with and do a bunch of other stuff with, I didn't really get to play any games today. It's just taking photos, having fun with friends, making new friends like Deadpool. Um, oh, I love costuming, I love dressing up. The other part, oh, the other part about cosplaying is you get to be the character and you get to have fun. And the person who would have the best answer for that is the guy dressing as Deadpool. My real name is Luke Harris, but my gamer tag is Zelda Man. And um, is this your first time cosplaying? Oh uh, yeah, it is actually. Is it, and what do you enjoy about doing it? Um, walking around and like just experiencing what it's like to be in the character's shoes. Um, a lot of fun. Uh, no, great hobby. A lot of friends, and mainly friends, because everyone likes to. You know, it's a nice costume. Everyone gets to know you. And it's really so it all seems fairly innocuous and family friendly. The stories about crazy sex parties with characters in costume fucking each other didn't come true, and I just got a friendly non-competitive vibe from the event. Points were awarded to contestants for creativity, originality and making the costumes from scratch. No doubt, there were some excellent costumes and the event was actually entertaining. I would suggest in the future to some of the contestants that if they're carrying a few extra kilos, they shouldn't wear lycra. But there were some very beautiful women competing and added bonus. It was good to see some kids getting involved too. It takes some very brave and oblivious souls to dress up as fictional characters and act them out on stage, but by the end of it I decided that it wouldn't be nice to piss on a bunch of people with more guts than me. The games industry in Australia has slowly been sucked dry of money by falling labour prices in the US, but it's encouraging to see so many small startups cashing in on the boom in digital distribution and mobile gaming. Cosplay was genuinely fun. But if you don't want to dress up, I guarantee just viewing one is quite entertaining. This is the second EB Games Expo now, which I think indicates that gaming does have a cultural significance in Australia, and rather than being a plaything of teenage boys, it is a medium of cultural transmission, and a good game can be just as good as a good novel. Um, so. Uh, there's a lot of people here uh, wearing clothes which you normally wouldn't. What do you think of that? I think it's alright. I think uh, the creativity is kind of good. I mean, some people have obviously come half-dressed, but apart from that, chicks are hot and the guys look awesome, so... <laughs>